Audacious Church, welcome back. Great to have you again for part four of this series. We're talking from Romans chapter 8, verse 28, and it's all called Believing for the Good. And Romans 8, 28 says this, and we know that in all things, how many things? All things. What type of things? All things. Not some things, not just big things, and not just little things and medium-sized things. But in all things, God works together for the good of those who love him and have been called according to his purpose. And I want to really carry on from yesterday looking at ease and the will of God and, and just the combination of those two things. You see, while I was living in Australia in 1994, I heard God speak to me about moving back to England and one day planting a church. And uh, having been born in England to Welsh parents and having been born in Manchester, it was so exciting for Sophie and I to get married and relocate countries and start the adventure of serving God as youth pastors and then associate pastors. And then, of course, coming to Manchester to launch Audacious Church in the city of my birth. And I've got to tell you, when God first spoke to me about planting a church and, and establishing Audacious Church in Manchester, I was so thrilled. I was so excited. I was like that analogy I used the other day, a child on a bicycle at the top of the hill, ready to go down, freewheeling down the hill, gaining speed, wind in my hair, just enjoying the ride. And, uh, you know, I've I got to be honest that the last 14 years of leading Audacious Church has been a continual dream come true. I, I, I look around our church every Sunday and I see our small groups in operation and, and see uh, the A-teams and the Audacious Foundation at work, uh, see everything that's taking place with our ESOL and, uh, and housing refugees and homeless and, and, and see the plans and the dreams coming to pass for our new cathedral. I hear the stories coming back from each and every one of your lives of breakthroughs and the miraculous. So many of you being, being um, just in, in captured by God and, and, and vision. I, I see you lifting your sights and believing for more. And, you know, over the Christmas production time, just being able to sit back and watch our church in operation, the creative team and Pastor Mark preaching so well and, and so many different things to watch the team, the volunteers serving. What a dream come true. I've, I felt like a proud dad and I feel like a proud dad every Sunday watching God at work in our church. But honestly, it hasn't been easy. There have been some moments that I've just looked and thought, how are we going to get through this next season? What's going to happen? Uh, what, what, you know, just, just uh, the, the, the challenges, the what ifs, the, the buts have, have been ever present. Somebody once said to me that, you know, the, the greater your measure of faith, there also fear is knocking at the door. And that's a reality, I think, in all of our lives. Faith and fear at times can go hand in hand. The excitement with the challenge. You know, it's kind of just like getting married. Getting married is great. You stand on a hill and you, you think of your wedding day. You think about your future. You think this is going to be brilliant. Then you go into honeymoon and you move into your new house and you love it. But then the honeymoon period inevitably ends. Honeymoon period, aka the grace period where you don't see any of your spouse's faults or habits. It comes to an end and then you realize this is not always going to be easy. And life isn't always easy. But why do we think it would be? Why did you think, why did I think starting a business would be easy or university would potentially be easy or launching a ministry would be easy? Ease is a very poor indicator of the will of God. And nowhere in scripture does it tell us that the will of God and ease go hand in hand. Friends, believing for the good and pursuing the will of God is a journey. Remember what the Bible says in James chapter 1, verse 2 to 4. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many and varied kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking in anything. I love that. Consider it pure joy. Now, joy for me is like a good banoffee pie. Joy to me is the first coffee of the morning. Joy to me is a really good curry with friends. And this scripture says, consider it pure joy when you face trials of many kinds. It doesn't say have anything to do with ease. In fact, I would go so far to say that if it's easy, 
then it may be true that you're doing the wrong thing. Wow. The Bible puts it this way. Isaiah 54 verse 2. Enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch your tent curtains wide. Don't hold back. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes. It doesn't say anything about ease. It says enlarge. It says stretch. It says don't hold back. Lengthen. Strengthen. It doesn't say take it easy. Seek contentment, compromise, or settle down. So I challenge you on day four of this year, don't make ease the measuring line for the will of God in your life. He's working for you. He works in all things and he's working for the good, but it won't always be easy. Quote of the day is this. Ease is not the indicator of the will of God for your life. Sometimes the will of God is tough. Love your church. See you tomorrow.